Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is December 8th and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. I'm coming to you from Mountain View, Hawaii, currently out here documenting the volcano. Got some cool video last night I'll be uploading to the channel here probably today or tomorrow morning. But right now, taking a look at the Pacific Northwest, you can see the infrared satellite imagery here, that frontal system moving across the area last night, continuing to do so this morning, starting to drive all the way down across Oregon and California. You can see that very cold air off the coast of North America there, shown in the cumuliform clouds. We're gonna have some more cold air move down across the region here, not a classic Arctic outbreak, but it is some pretty chilly air. Some potential for some lowland snow across the Pacific Northwest, but not the big Arctic outbreak we're looking at, but pretty interesting extended forecast coming up here too. So we'll take a look at that coming up. Uh, jumping right into things here, this is for Pendleton. Check out some of these winds for the higher terrain there. Some nice snows across the Cascades, north, um, east and eastern um, Oregon. They're getting some good snowfall amounts as well. More snow and strong winds can be expected out there this weekend. This is for Spokane. You can see Friday night through Saturday night, some highest accumulation in central Washington. Of course, the eastern Washington, Idaho panhandle, a little bit lesser amounts there, but heavy snow can reduce visibilities accumulating on the cold road surfaces. Of course, it is much cooler as you get off to the east of the Cascades here across Pacific Northwest, as I've shown you in previous runs of my videos here. Now taking a look here, this is off for Medford, Oregon here. Um, pretty strong frontal system coming down late Friday through Saturday. You can see significant impacts expected here. The snow level is going to crash behind that frontal system as well. Great graphic here by the National Weather Service Medford here. So heads up if you're traveling, especially I-5, you get into the higher terrain through southern Oregon there on Friday night into Saturday. Um, a nice winter storm coming down through the area there. This is off for Missoula, Montana. You can see some areas of snowfall as we go through this weekend. Some moderate impact potential Sunday through Monday. Widespread snow is possible out there. Now take a look at what's going on here. This is 18,000 feet, 500 millibars. You can see that purple there along the west coast of North America. That's very cold air. And you can see it sweep through, and that's what caused the frontal system last night and this morning moving across the area. Then look at that second polar lobe kind of moved down off the coast of southeast Alaska and British Columbia, come towards Pacific Northwest. But you'll notice it kind of gets cut off a bit there. You know, it's that pinching off occurring off to the west of Vancouver Island. The main polar lobe continues on through um, Canada and out of our lives here. That kind of bowling ball looking feature moving down through California at this point. Now, as we go on to the extended a little bit more here, you notice how we're still getting this northerly flow, not the typical southwesterly flow we tend to get a lot of times in the winter here across Pacific Northwest. So we're going to be in a little bit of a precipitation deficit probably as we go through mid-December here, but that does not mean there is not the potential for some crazy weather coming up. Look at this polar lobe shown in some of the extended European and GFS runs. Start to clip the Pacific Northwest here, breaks down that ridge off the coast of west coast of north america there and you can see that polar lobe coming up, up and developing across southeast alaska there so it's way out in the extended but it's interesting that the models are showing it and they're in pretty good agreement we're going to remain in kind of this north flow and keep a lot of the southwest warmer systems out of the pacific northwest at least through mid-december here kind of a decent model agreement there now taking a look at what's coming up here. Let's take a look at this frontal system moving through. You can see the mountain snows occurring, valley rains for the most part, but something interesting happens as we go through Friday. You can see that coastal low there moving into the Pacific Northwest. And look what happens up towards Southern BC, Eastern Vancouver Island here. Some of the interior of the Northwest of Washington could get some snowfall with this as we go through Friday night on into early Saturday morning here across the area there. And of course, goes without saying, some nice mountain snows coming up with that system as well. As you can see, that frontal system moved down all the way down through California. Again, bring some snows all the way down through the Oregon Cascades, the Sierra Nevada, the Rocky Mountains, BC, Idaho, Montana are gonna make out great in this as well. Now, take a look at the winds associated with this, and I'll show you why that snow does have the potential to fall in some of the lowland areas up towards Northwest Washington and Southwest BC. Now, taking a look here, you can see these east winds. Look at that Seattle North, these east winds ripping from east to west there across the Strait of Juan de Fuca, for example. You can see kind of some easterly flow, northeasterly flow, even coming out of the Fraser River Gap there a bit here as that low is offshore there. That could keep some cooler air in the area there and bank up, especially against Vancouver Island and maybe cause a little bit of lowland snowfall with that there. The European not showing as much as the NAM 3 cam here, but they have pretty good agreement in the low placement and the easterly winds coming out there. And you can see another front, uh, turn your attention down to Southern Oregon coastline there, another strong frontal system moving down through the region there as that low kind of fills off our coastline and weakens there. 
as we go on into Saturday afternoon shown here. Now taking a look here, 925 millibar temperatures. Temperature is not that far off the surface. Here we go. Some colder air makes its way down in through tonight on into tomorrow morning across the area. Here comes the next storm system off there, spawned by that Arctic air moving off the coast of Southeast Alaska. Now, as we get a little bit closer here into Friday evening, you know some of that colder air here, that those whites showing up north of Seattle towards East Vancouver Island, again, Southwest BC, and some of that colder air there could allow for a little bit of lowland snowfall there. And you'll see that strong frontal system driving down the Oregon coast shown here into California as we go on in through Saturday afternoon. Now taking a look here at some of the wind speeds we can expect. There goes that frontal system. There is some wind advisories up for Northwest Washington and some of the coastal areas there, but that should be expiring probably as I'm doing the briefing here now. Now let's look at the next frontal system coming in here. You can, you'll be able to plainly see it here as we go through Friday. There it comes. You can see most of the big winds really kind of staying off the Washington, Oregon coast, kind of that easterly component. So some southeasterly winds, but down towards the Southwest Oregon coastline here, it's going to get pretty windy along the coastline. As you can see down there, some gusts up towards 60 miles per hour are possible. And you can see some gusts out of the east there, 45, even higher across some of the Strait of Juan de Fuca, the Strait of Georgia up there as well, as well across the higher terrain of the Cascades, especially. Not The winds aren't going to be too strong around the Seattle or Portland metro area, but you can see the higher terrain really getting it there. And by the time we go into late Friday night, Saturday morning, you see the Oregon coast getting some pretty good winds all the way up towards Tillamook and <clears throat> Seaside up there. But put this into motion and get a little bit more. And you can see we kind of relax here as we start to get some ridging. But then we'll be watching those next polar lobes moving around across Canada on through the extended. This is the NAMP 3KM total snow Kuchera ratio. Of course, goes without saying big snows for the Cascades of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, um, all the way up through BC as well. But now watch as we go into Friday night, you'll see some of that snow accumulating up there. It looks like three plus inches for Southwest BC, according to the NAM. And sometimes the NAM underdoes these. We remember the last rounds, how the high resolution models were not picking up on some of the snowfall very well. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of lowland snowfall, mainly probably Everett North is possible with this scenario here. Gonna, gonna be a hit or miss situation up there. But you can see the Seattle Metro, Portland Metro, Willamette Valley, Puget Sound, the coastal areas not expecting snowfall out of this, but you can see places like Eastern Washington, look as we go on in through Saturday morning here, Spokane getting measurable snowfall, big snows with the higher terrains, of course, as well. Now, taking a look here, this is the European wider look at things here. I just want to kind of show you the extent of this first system moving across the region here, getting some nice snowfall. Here we are into Saturday morning, all the way down through the Sierras, the Rocky Mountains, look at the Cascades of Washington, Oregon, BC. Nice snowfall amounts coming up here. The Olympic Mountains getting a nice coating again, Vancouver Island. So I just wanted to show the extent of these next two storm systems as we go on into Sunday afternoon shown here. Now taking a look at the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, you can see the yin and yang of the cold and warm across the lower 48 states here. Again, targeting the Pacific Northwest, but watch what happens when we go to the 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook shown here. Look at that big below average bullseye on us here as we stay in this northerly flow after these systems move by here. So this would be valid from December 13th through 17th here. As we stay in that north flow, we're not getting those warm southwest systems bringing um, additional rainfall in here. That's why we're going to have that below average signal. Now taking a look here, we're going to look out in the extended forecast here. You'll see some similarities in the models here. This is that first lobe moving there that kind of gets cuts up, cut off Polar lobe moves through northern Canada there. Another one gets cut off off our coastline here as we go through next mid next week. See that ridge starting to develop across British Columbia there. This would actually spawn quite a dynamic system down across Oregon, some of the west coast down towards California here as we go on in through the following week. But then you'll notice we're kind of in this northerly flow here. And then you'll see in the extended European here, a polar lobe develops quickly and moves over the Pacific Northwest there. And it really in this northwesterly flow, you can see that polar lobe kind of move across Alaska there, down southeast Alaska there, and kind of gets cut off here across Pacific Northwest. Go on to the extended a little bit further, and you can see another polar lobe kind of moving down across Canada there. So kind of agreement with that northerly flow. This does not mean we're going into some Arctic, you know, big time snow blast here across Pacific Northwest, because that ridge position there is not that favorable as of now. But it is kind of an interesting scenario where we stay in this north flow. Now let's look at the GFS. This is yesterday. This is actually this morning's run. So here we go with that cutoff. Um, you know, that polar lobe just drops that cold air off across the region there. Not a dynamic Arctic blast for us here in the Pacific Northwest, as you saw with those lowland snowfall amounts, not really amounting to much across much of the Pacific Northwest, west of the Cascades anyway. 
Then you can see that ridge kind of building here as we go on to the following week, that cutoff low moving down towards California there. But then watch what happens to the extended. You can see similar northwest flow there and some um, more Arctic air trying to make its way a little bit south here and some of that colder air aloft making its way down here. And look at the extended of the GFS here. Really a nasty batch of cold air coming down for the Pacific Northwest there. And that would be a pretty dynamic system. But we're looking far out. But the main thing is the European and the GFS do have some pretty good agreement in this north flow and below average precipitation and potential for flirting with some cold air on through the extended. This is just something we're going to watch at this point. Things can still change, of course. It's just pretty rare to keep these warm systems from the Pacific North, uh, off the Pacific Ocean into the Pacific Northwest as we go. Um, yeah, if you've lived every amount of time, you know how hard that can be. So anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the weather here. This is um, nice mountain snows building up across the area. Typical La Nina pattern here where we get this ridging set up. It's allowing cold air back down into the region again. It could do that a bit off into the extended as well as we just saw. We might get some ridging as well too, some below average temperatures. We could even set into some kind of a foggy pattern as well. You know, you just have to kind of take this day at a time. We'll kind of watch those model trends as we go. But anyway, hope you guys are enjoying um, the briefing here in the car. I was woken up like two times last night to some very heavy rain, pretty typical here near Hilo on the big island there. The trade showers moving through, bringing some pretty good precipitation rates out here. Got some good video like I might have mentioned earlier about the volcano up there. We're going to go up there probably for sunset tonight, do some time lapses, try to get some more video and whatnot. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so I'll probably, I'll try to do another briefing tomorrow. If not, I'll probably be home Saturday and I'll do a full briefing back from my computer at home so I can we can break down the extended forecast and see what's changed and whatnot. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. Thanks to all my new members, my new subscribers. You guys make the channel possible. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow or Saturday at the very latest.